August 10th meeting of the Montpelier Planning Commission to order. Uh, and the first thing uh, that uh, we should do is approve the agenda for today. So if everyone takes a look and when you're ready, uh, give us a motion to approve the agenda or discuss something. Looks good. All right. So is that a motion from John to approve the agenda? Correct. Okay. We have a second. 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 I'll second. Stephanie. Okay. All in favor of approving the agenda, say aye. 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 Okay. Any opposed? Okay. Agenda approved. Great. And that brings us to uh, our next item, which uh, we have comments from the chair, and we actually have on the agenda a little item um, there. Um, so, what I'd like to what I'd like to um, just bring to everyone's attention is is basically I'd like to apologize because of something that happened at the last meeting when we were voting um, or when, when we had a motion to to resolve the uh, Pioneer Street issue uh, we had we had a motion to, for a particular resolution and there were still three options out there available. And usually what I try to do and what I think I've been successful in doing quite a bit is before taking any big action, clarifying and making sure that everyone is on the same page about the repercussions for what we're doing. Um, I kind of have a teacher background and like, and in that background, I definitely err on the side of like giving too much information. And I think that that's important because it, it really is really important to me that we all are on the same page about what we're doing all the time. And I think that that is much more important than if there, if we're following rules strictly or not. Now we could follow rules more or we could follow rules less, but the rules can help or it can uh, hinder communication. And I think communication is a really important thing. So my apology is that I sensed that people were getting sick of the topic and I let my fear of people being kind of upset with how things were going affect um, my decision making. And I kind of let the, the motion go quickly and we kind of acted quickly there. I should have followed my regular instinct and slowed things down and let everyone know um, what, or make sure we were all in, in, in the same understanding about what that motion meant and how, it, and how that was going to end the thing for, um, for us. So from now on, I mean, that's what I'm going to do. And hopefully I won't make that mistake again when something comes up. Um, you know, sometimes we need to we stop and, and uh, really take in what's happening and not let things go too fast. Um, like I said before, that could mean adhering to rules more. But at the same time, I think we could have had that same exact problem if we were following Robert's rules very strictly and then someone had a, a, something that they uh, were unsure about, but they didn't know procedurally how to ask us about it, I feel like more procedure could have also led to the same misunderstanding. So for me, I think it's communication is what's really paramount. Um, and with that, if anyone else has any thoughts about uh, what happened last week uh, with the vote, then um, please feel free to, to tell us whatever you think. I open the floor. I've got a quick add-on. Um, thanks, Kirby, for that. I don't know that uh, I don't know that you needed to like full on apologize, I and mean, I appreciate it. But I, I also don't think. Um, well, anyways, I, I was unhappy with last week's hearing and how it went, but I think a lot of it might have been as I've been thinking about it after word. I think a lot of it might be just from my newness to this and to the procedure and to uh, the fact that I didn't really like any of the options that were presented. And I think that we lost very quickly the fact that doing nothing was an option. And I, I'd i like to remember, I think maybe I'm just talking for myself, just saying this for my own benefit, but I, I would like to remember that even in the face of some pretty... Um, particular pressure from members of the public, I think that we should be, we should feel like we can do nothing if it's not a good, op if it's not a good idea to begin with. And I don't think it was, 
I think we, I certainly lost that very quickly um, last time. And I don't want to lose that again because I feel <laughs> really crappy about the way it went last time and I don't want to do that again. So um, that's my main point. I think, you know, the rules, I think the rules, um, I would just ask if we can be really transparent about how we're, what we're, how we're using the rules, like how, like if we want to use the rules to, to narrow and use motions to narrow the scope of discussion to move things along, that's great, but can, can we say that when we're doing it? Uh, because up until now, we've only ever brought motions, in my experience, as, you know, until when we're ready. I think we're like on the same page, okay, motion, and it's done. We've never used them in the year I've been listening in to narrow the discussion. So that's fine if we want to do it that way. I just need, maybe this is just for my benefit, but it would be great if we could be really clear with each other how we're, um, how we're using those and that no option is an option and it's okay to, sh to not agree on the motion. And I think, like I said, I may be just saying this out loud for my own benefit, but um, it was a learning, that was a learning experience last time. And I, it was not a gentle one, so I, I just don't want to repeat it. <laughs> Thanks, Thank Marcel. Thanks. And and I completely agree that we did we didn't really have good op that we didn't have good options for that. I, I wasn't comfortable with it either. I mean, so I'm with you on that too. Um, uh, oh, go ahead, go ahead. Since I missed the last meeting, do do you mind just quickly telling me what happened because I didn't get a chance to read the minutes either if they were sent. Uh, basically, we we went with the resolution of splitting along the railroad tracks so that the the roadside of the railroad tracks would become part of the Eastern Gateway and the river side would stay as it is. Uh, um, and we basically, we had a motion for that resolution. It was something we were discussing and there was a motion and we approved it and that's kind of what we, how we ended up resolving it. But what we didn't do is very clearly hold it up and say, well, how, I mean, is that the resolution that has the most support or one of the other two options, which was, you know, uh, you know, and one of those two other options was do nothing. And then, and then one of the options was to change just the neighborhood zoning to allow storage units. So, so we didn't hold those up and, and make and find out whether or not that was, you know, that resolution was the one that had the most support. It was just, it had enough support and we approved it. So that ended up being what our recommendation was. So if I can, if I can just tack on to that, to be a little more specific, what happened was is we were debating the same options that we had the meeting before. And I put forth the motion to prove the splitting of the parcel uh, approach. I voted against my own motion. So we ended up going on a four to one approving it. The reason why I made the motion was because I felt like given the discussion that we were having, people's positions seemed fairly clear to me. And one of the benefits of putting forward a motion is that it distills the discussion. And under Robert's Rules of Order, once you make a motion, it is then put on the floor to debate the motion. At that point, you have a pointed motion under which you have a discussion. And you can hash out whatever you want with respect to that. That discussion didn't happen, and it, it moved to a vote on a four to one. Um, and I think this is probably where some of us differ with this issue. I, I applaud the effort to try to get universal buy-in and get as, as many people on the same page as possible. However, I think, you know, this is a deliberative body. It's, you know, I think there's going to be room for disagreement. I think that's healthy in a commission to do that. And what I think motions do, and I think we should, I think we should start moving towards a model where we are making more motions because I think it focuses our discussion. And, you know, the second thing I would say is in my experience is if you have any concerns about the motion, if you do not agree with it, if you do not think it is the thing for the body to do, when we are debating the motions, you can offer an amendment to the motion. You can, you can say, I don't think this is a good motion and explain why we have that discussion there. I think the problem what we're doing now is, is that we're having sort of an amorphous discussion up front, where we're just sort of figuring out what we want to do. And then at the end, we think we have some sort of concept of what we all want to do, 
we put forth a motion to just basically do that thing. And because nobody's really 100% clear about it, we just sort of say, OK, yeah, that's OK. I, I think if we start putting motions on the floor earlier on in the discussion, we then can sort of really figure out what the sticking points are among, you know, what the real core issues are that we're sort of debating. Um, and this is, it's a, you know, where we're doing this, you know, in the context of a planning commission, it gets a little weird because a lot of it is just having a general discussion. But when there are action items in front of us, like somebody is asking us to do something very specific, you know, I think using a motion process and really sort of digging into it and adhering to the rules, I think we'll get positive outcomes. I understand that it took a lot of people by, it didn't end up sort of conveying the kind of, it didn't go the way people thought it was going to. And I understand that there's a certain amount of frustration about that, but like, I mean, I think at some point you just got to ask yourself, like, if there's a motion on the floor and you don't agree with it, don't agree with it. Or if you want to make it better, make it better. And I think I would just encourage people to start exercising that judgment a little more and being, forthcoming about it because I'm fine with there being four to three votes all over the place just so long as we've had a discussion and we feel good about our votes I'd, I'd rather do that than have seven or decisions across the board every time so all right thanks Aaron and um, I'll when, when there's a motion on the floor I will try to make sure that we all are aware that we can continue to debate when that motion's on the floor, because that that's part of Robert's <clears throat> part of Robert's rules, and it's it's not a part that we use a lot of the time, but it it's it's part of it. So I'll I'll make sure to stop and 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 try to flesh out more uh, discussion at those times. Um, okay, well, do any, anyone else have anything to say about that topic? Okay. That brings us to the uh, general business. Uh, if we have members of the public with us who have anything uh, to discuss that's not on the agenda. Now's the time for that. I believe that Brandy and Polly are both here for the presentation from the uh, from the town of Berlin. So, are you ready for that to start? Uh, looks like it. Looks like we don't have any general minutes. But before we do that, we do have to consider our minutes. So it'll be just just a moment longer, and then we'll be right to you. Okay. Uh, could everyone take a look at the minutes that Mike sent around from July twenty seven? We have a motion to approve. Motion to approve the minutes. Okay. We have a motion from Aaron. Do we have a second? People are still reading. That's fine. I wasn't there, so. I'll second. Okay. We have a second from Marcella. So everyone ready to, to vote or you still reading? Let us know. Okay, so uh, all in favor of approving the minutes, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Stephanie abstains, I take it? I, I voted, I just didn't want to be one okay. of the first two <laughs> since I wasn't there. <laughs> I'm, good, but I'm good with it. Alrighty, all right, so those are approved. And that now brings us to town of Berlin. We're going to share uh, some information about their new town center application. So with that, uh, Brandy, the floor is yours. 
Great. Let me know so, if you want me to share a screen with you. It looks like I can share my screen, so okay. I will hear in just a moment, Mike, if there's a problem, I'll, you'll hear about it. <laughs> um, so thanks for um, inviting us. Um, I'm Brandy Saxton, a planning uh, consultant work. Um, I've worked with Montpelier in, in past years. I see that you've got a almost entirely new planning commission, all except for John, who's still holding it there. Um, but uh, so we're, I'm happy to be here tonight to um, talk to you guys about something going on in your neighboring municipality of Berlin. And I have one of the Berlin Planning Commission members here with me as well. That's me. <laughs> So, um, as you may be aware, Berlin is in the process of putting together um, designation applications for a new town center and a neighborhood development area uh, with hopes of getting those applications um, before the downtown development board sort of in the early part of next year, um, depending on a few variables in between now and then. Um, I'm going to share my screen and show you the area that um, the town is currently looking at and walk you through a couple of slides to give you a sense of what's being planned. Um, DHCD asked Berlin um, to reach out to all the interested parties um, in the designation application before this gets to the downtown board in an effort to identify and hopefully resolve any issues. Um, and the Berlin Planning Commission and Select Board are probably going to have a more formal ask of the city council in Montpelier and also in various city um, around the end of the month or so to um, help out the application process with letters of support. Um, so we thought that reaching out to both the planning commissions and the two city councils uh, would be a good way to get you the baseline information that you would need to decide whether it's something that city can support. So with that, I'll share this up. So um, let me zoom. I think this probably works fairly well. This is the area that Berlin is looking at uh, for the Newtown Center designation. Um, where my, let me get the hand here, where my the cursor is right now, that's the hospital. Um, it includes the mall area here. There's um, the car dealerships down here, and it comes down to Route 62. Um, so this is, the exact boundaries may change a little. There's some wetlands that we're currently in the process of doing some more delineation work on, and so that might adjust some of these boundaries a little bit, particularly on this back side over here. Um, but generally, um, this is the property. So there's um, two major land owners, property owner interests in this, the hospital and the mall. Um, the hospital also owns this piece of land directly across from the hospital on Fisher Road. And then there are um, smaller property owners, the car dealerships and the school owns a piece, the school district owns a piece of this land here. So um, as we look forward through this, you can see this is just generally the area that the town is looking at. So um, the existing condition of the new town center area is very auto-oriented. So this project is really about um, it's sort of a sprawl repair project, um, looking at how to, to retrofit this existing built form and bring it uh, sort of as a transformation evolution over time to something that is a more walkable urban form. Um, and there's some really basic pieces of this that we've been um, looking at. So if you you actually get down to the basics of what makes this different, a different built form than downtown Montpelier, for example, um, it really lacks um, a street. So the Berlin Mall access road comes through here in front of the mall, and, and um, but it's really more like a drive aisle in a parking lot. You know, all of the rows of parking um, exit to it, there's a drive through that juts in and off out of it, um, it, it's not really a, a street in, in the way that State Street is or Main Street is in Montpelier. Um, and there are, at this point, disconnected pieces of sidewalk, um, which are the solid orange lines uh, with plans to connect those in. This is the new senior housing 
project that's being that's just started under construction this season. Um, that's going to put 98, I think, units of senior housing um, here, sort of the first housing infill project. Um, so even with that and with the connection of the rest of this sidewalk through, it's still going to not be a very pedestrian friendly space. It's quite clear that you're, um, you, you have to navigate the, the vehicle traffic system and pass through areas that are traveled by cars and cross and recross the street in order to get over here. And then once you get to the hospital, you, you end up in the midst of a parking lot that has no pedestrian access either. Um, so the, while we don't have all the rest of that area mapped over here, it's as uh, inhospitable <laughs> as the uh, mall is to, to pedestrians. Um, so we've really worked with the Planning Commission um, to sort of start down at the very basic um, bare bones of what would it would take to begin to build urban form here at this site. And the street network is that starting point. So looking at how to find a um, alignment for a street, the alignment that's directly in front of the mall, um, it's, it's heavily um, constrained. There's first of all, there's a lot of people traffic back and forth um, going in and out. And really to convert this to a street frontage would require closing off the parking aisles. And those are, from the view of the retailers here, the premium parking spaces. Um, so you would lose the best parking in order to turn this into more of a street. And then you would still have to try to funnel people across this street. So we have looked at the idea of pulling the street to the back of the parking lot, essentially, uh, down here following this blue line and creating a, a frontage on which to start to organize um, a more uh, grid patterned and urban form of development. And this lines up creating a nice central um, street through the to the front entrance of the mall. There's already a slightly more developed parking um, aisle here that's got um, green uh, buffer, you know, planter strips along it and such as well. So it just builds off of, of that and, and then creates this first block um, here um, below the current parking lot uh, with a, a town green space um, and the possibility of, of putting in that um, that pattern starting there, sort of the, the center of, of what would be a downtown setting. And then the second thing we've looked at is the pedestrian connection piece. This is the other really critical um, element. It, it seems to us that the Berlin Town Center will still be a place that most people drive to, um, but it needs to become a place where people can park and then safely walk to multiple destinations, which really isn't that different from any downtown, your downtown. Um, you, you come into downtown, you park your car, and then you walk around if you don't actually live there. Um, so that is the concept here. And so we really focused in on where the major anchors are, where people need to move. And then um, the other idea is to put in a multi-use path that would come around the perimeter of the development site, thus providing a a path that could both be a transportation route um, and a recreation um, amenity for um, future residents that really minimizes the amount of um, interaction between people who are walking and biking and uh, driving. So there's only a couple of crossing points over the travel lanes uh, with this path. Sorry. And then um, so building out on that framework so that that basic street grid and then thinking about those major pedestrian um, corridors start to define blocks and um, potential building sites. And you can see that incrementally this, this could turn into a, a building line street with the mall and the main mall entrance at one anchor anchoring one end and coming down here to the, the green space and, and this cluster of buildings down here. Um, so it's really not an effort to turn the back, turn our backs on the mall. Um, it's rather a way of looking at them as the anchors and trying to build community and build this urban fabric around them um, while recognizing that it's going to take time, that those 
um, uses are going to evolve over time, perhaps, and change their parking needs and patterns, but it's not something that's, that's an instant, it's an instantaneous, um, easy fix that this is going to be incremental over time. And this is actually the, um, the full concept plan that we've been working with the major stakeholders, those property owners on. There's this, um, as I said, this is that senior housing building that's under construction here. There is interest in building another um, mixed use building with housing and um, potentially a childcare facility across the street from it. Um, and then the possibility of building um, additional residential, um, potentially a municipal office space um, and, and some sort of a small retail dining type use uh, as we head out towards Route 62 in this direction. So extending that and filling in. One thing that we do have on this site is, is quite a bit of wetland area to work around. So that does constrain the um, pattern to some degree. So there's a wetland area back in here and there's another one in here. So we've, we've basically got nodes that we can fill into and around. Um, and then coming to that main area where I pointed out the idea of creating that first block and starting with a green space, thinking about that line with buildings um, the possibility, this is another potential place where you could put in a mixed-use building that might have the municipal offices. That's one of the requirements of the new town center is to think about having some sort of a civic building and function here. So um, that is something that Berlin is, is considering. Um, the other option, and maybe a, a short-term or an interim or even a long-term option, is to actually look at space inside the mall as well itself. Um, as a place for municipal office um, activity to occur. So, so you can see how this could fill, infill in this direction and then potentially infill out um, towards the hospital. The hospital has interests uh, and is working on its own um, strategic planning effort and considering the use of this property that it owns across the um, road from the main facility. They're thinking about medical office building uses um, that, that could potentially go in here um, that could be combined with some other sort of small scale office uh, or you know retail uses. We, we think that the market for retail in this area is probably fairly low. The, as you may have heard, the pennies will be closing. So that's a large, that's like 36,000 square feet of commercial space to be filled in there. Um, and there are, of course, other vacant uh, buildings in the area as well. So there's really a glut of retail space um, on the market. So we're thinking that most of the retail that uh, might appear in the Newtown Center initially would be fairly small um, footprint. Um, you know, there's a bit of a, a site here at the corner where a small building could be infilled, you know, something in the size of a, a, a you know, a, a restaurant or something like that. Um, but it's really primarily a um, residential infill type of project. So if we're looking at at this sort of blow up with the air photo behind it, you can see here's that that block with the green uh, and these three being residential buildings, maybe this one with a, a, a commercial or municipal first floor. Uh, our conversations already, I think the next version, this is a plan that continues to evolve. This building block in here I think we'd, we'd probably be looking at being another more residential or potentially a mixed use building with a little bit of um, commercial space in it, but primarily residential. And then we get to the spaces where, uh, depending on what the hospital decides to do, this um, will shift. We've, they already have said they want a building larger than this one. So the next version of this plan is probably not gonna have four buildings here, but it's probably gonna have one larger one and then two smaller uh, buildings. But that's generally, the plans for what's going on in Berlin. And let me try to stop sharing my screen. Um, so we're here to take any comments or answer any questions um, that you guys may have. Well, thanks, Brandy, and thanks, Polly, uh, for making yourselves available. Uh, does anyone have any questions about the application? So, I mean, I, I guess as a matter of general background, to make sure everyone's clear, 
Um, so you're applying to the state to be to have a designated town center. Is that right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Berlin will seek the new town center designation because it's uh, that's it's it's the equivalent of the downtown designation that Montpelier has, except for it's four communities that don't have a traditional historic downtown. They never, were, you know, Berlin was a very rural community until the interstate showed up and dumped an exit. And uh, an airport, you know, I guess the airport was there before the interstate, but, you know, then a hospital and, uh, you know, all these things uh, on its doorstep, um, thus creating a node of, of development there. Um, but it never had a, an actual downtown um, historically. So they would look for the new town center designation. There are two um, other communities in, Ber in Vermont that have um, new town center designations. The program hasn't actually been utilized that much. Um, so there's one in South Burlington for their city center area, and there's one in Colchester for um, an area called Severance Corners. Um, it's been more than 10 years since, I think, um, a, anyone has sought a new town center designation. Okay. Anyone have questions? Is there... Um... Any interest or any proposals for building anything in the middle part? I could see someone wanting to build a restaurant along the highway there, but um, just curious if uh, anything's been proposed there. There is definitely a strong interest in the residential um, development potential on the property. Um, the mall is in a position um, right now due to having done the Coles project um, several years ago and then the senior housing project, both of which um, are on the larger mall property. They've actually subdivided off the piece that goes to the senior housing. Um, so that's that's a new lot now, but those came off the mall, that came off the mall site. They're in a position where to do further development, they need to go through an Active 50 master planning process as well. So this is, is lining up with that, um, potentially. The town is interested in doing the designations primarily to get access to funding options. So they're interested in a TIF district. The town has been doing quite a bit of infrastructure work in this area to bring water and sewer here. Um, and working actually with Montpelier on that. So Berlin buys its uh, sewer um, allocation from you guys. And I think there's some sort of joint effort to swap and organize and make the water lines make more sense. Um, hearing Tom describe it, uh, my understanding is that there's various people's water lines going in various directions, none of which are perhaps as logical <laughs> as they should be at this point. So the ho I think you guys serve the hospital right now, but the hospital also has, some, I think, a well of its own too. And then um, Berlin has been working on putting in the enough putting in wells and getting enough capacity to meet that demand. And then I think there's also some sort of swap with stuff that's happening down on 302 as well between you and Berlin. So there's a lot of work being done on the infrastructure front between the municipalities. You mentioned the NDA as well. Is that? I'm not sure I completely understand the new town center. Is it also the NDA over the exact same area, or is it is the NDA a separate area? So I don't have a map of the NDA area because it's still under discussion. Um, it will probably be most of that new town center area. It doesn't seem like we'll do the um, portion of the hospital main campus that's on the opposite side of Fisher Road because the NDA is for housing so the neighborhood development area, and it does not seem that the hospital is interested in putting housing on their main campus, um, logically enough. So it probably, the NDA would not go necessarily over um, that side of Fisher Road, but it might take in some land that heads towards Payne Turnpike, um, which is also zoned. It's zoned the same as the land that's in the mall. Um, and
I think the state is looking at the park and ride to some degree about doing some improvements there. There's a park and ride right at the Payne Turnpike intersection with 62, and that might lead to um, better transit access from there too. Um, so from a point of view of trying to find a location that sort of hits all the check boxes about what we think would be you know, good from a state planning perspective to have housing where we want to have housing located, this, this site really does um, quite well on that. Um, assuming the pedestrian improvements can be made, it's a very walkable um, place in terms of having access to grocery stores, uh, employment, obviously the hospitals, the, the is the second largest employer after the, the state in the, in the region. Um, and they see housing as a major um, problem for them right now in terms of attracting and retaining staff. So they'd like to see housing there. And you know, it's probably also a location that would, um, just like it already has, generate um, interest for senior housing as well, uh, both because of that access to services and transit um, and, and, and the you know, ability to do higher density housing in that spot. Do we have anything else? Um, I, oh, sorry. Oh, oh, yeah, if we have a question, go ahead. I, I just have a quick comment. I'll just say that I think the, the idea is great. I would love to see that vision come forward. So I'm, good luck to you guys. Nice. Yeah, more housing is definitely great. Montpelier knows about that. Um, Mike, I was going to ask you, uh, is there is there a role as uh, like other than just generally needing to know and being part of the regional planning commission, all that? Is there is there a specific role that Montpelier would play in this process? Or Brandy can answer too, whatever. Yeah, I mean, I think Brandy mentioned at the start they'll be they will be looking for letters of support from the planning commission and the city council as they're moving forward because what they what they don't want to do is put a lot of effort in and then have the city for whatever reason come out in opposition to it um uh, when i talked to brandy i you know i mentioned i didn't think that there would be i think this is something that the city would support um generally um we you know some things that you know could have been issues you know would be you know whether it's transportation Stephanie can draft the uh, letter on behalf of the planning commission. Happy to. <laughs> so thank you guys for hosting us and uh, hearing about the project. And if you do have more questions or want some information, um, definitely feel free to reach out. Mike knows how to find me if uh, you don't necessarily have my contact information and we can um, definitely provide answers and more information so yes thank you for your time we really appreciate it thanks for reaching out yeah great all right thanks good evening yeah thank you nice Bye. to see you polly nice yeah, to see thank you. you yeah bye-bye all right well uh brings us to the final uh, item on the agenda for tonight which is a kind of substantive follow-up to what we had a preview discussion about last week. And that's about, you know, trying to, um, trying to focus, uh, what we're going to do in the short and a uh, long term, uh, vis-a-vis -vis the city plan, uh, and also about incorporating public outreach. I mean, you know, a lot of these, this discussion came about because, you know, I kind of took, uh, informally to grab some feedback from uh, most of you and um and it seemed like these were areas that people were the most interested in in um pursuing uh so with that you know we have two big topics of discussion tonight the first one is uh about developing a subcommittee approach i think for purposes of i don't know what what might be a more accurate thing to call this would be working group unless somebody has an issue with that i think we should just call these working groups um because that's something that planning commissions have i mean with the, we have subcommittees too but that just sounds too formal uh, i think working group is more accurate to what we're talking about 
So, uh, you know, if we can have this, these, these working groups and develop those as a way to deep, to, to dig deeper on some of the major areas of concern that we have, uh, cause a lot of people felt that we need to do that. Um, but what we have to do is we have to flesh out what that would look like. And that's what we want to try to do right now. Um, I had uh, some email discussion with Aaron earlier, and he had a lot of ideas about a framework uh, that could work. Um, you know, not not the whole thing flushed out, but but it's something for us to start with, something meaty for us to start with. And I have the same exact thoughts for the most part from what Aaron was saying. So I invited him to kind of take the lead and, and walk us through how some of the uh, aspects of this are going to look like. Um, and so with that, I'll just go ahead and, and turn it over to Aaron and, and he can walk us through uh, like a, a starting point for the working group approach. Go ahead, Aaron. Sure. Um, just trying to share my screen. What's that? Whoops. I don't know if I shared the right thing here. Hold on. Looks right. What are you What are you seeing? A uh, piece of paper, city plan, working group. Okay, cool. For some reason, okay. Mine is showing something different. All right, perfect. So, uh, I was just chatting with Kirby earlier. Aaron, can you zoom in? Sorry. Oh, uh, sorry. I can't. Yeah, I can't see. Yeah, that's better. Thank you. Can you see the whole thing or just part of it? Oh, I, I can see. see just part of it, yeah. Okay. I'll try to start for that. So I was chatting with Kirby about this, and I think so, that, like he was saying, there's sort of two big stick items with this. First is sort of how do we form the, the working groups, and second, how do we integrate um, sort of public comment? So I sort of broke down the first part into three pieces and then there's the public uh, comment piece. So the way I approached it was, was sort of, I think there's three issues. One is how do we, we want to make sure we can define the scope of what the working groups are doing. Second is what's the composition of the working groups going to be. And third is, is what's its timeline and deliverables for that. So um, I thought maybe it'd be best if we sort of broke it down into those three areas and tackled them one at a time, and sort of uh, help us sort of move along. If there's anything else that you think we should sort of bring into this discussion, please say so and we'll, we'll do that. But um, so with that said, I think the first issue is sort of the scope of the working group. Um, you know, and I think right off the bat, um, it's never been a hundred percent clear in my mind sort of what the division of labor between the commissioners and staff is going to be with respect to sort of getting this thing in final form. Um, so that may be good to sort of make sure we have a firm understanding of not only what the division of labor is going to be at this phase, but how that feeds into the next one, who does that, I and mean, sort of who makes this into a final product and who drafts the. So I, I, can, I can chime in on, on sure. my initial thoughts for that would, were, and that's first off that the staff would not staff participate in the, in the working group. Unless, unless Mike really wanted to or had a different idea. But I'm thinking that they're, they're spread thinly and this is about the planning commission kind of wanting to take a deeper dive of research on its own. So it wouldn't be an official meeting of the group as long as we keep the numbers to three or fewer. So there's no need for there to be staff. And this is jumping ahead a little bit, but the thought is that the working groups would bring all of their ideas back to the entire planning commission during a regular meeting. So, you know, that would be when any action take place. Like, so um, it's basically just a study group. Right. And so I, I guess that's not clear from what I put in the outline is, is I'm thinking even more broadly than that, just sort of out of the gate is what the division of labor would be is, you know, working groups get together, they do their work. It's approved by the planning commission as a whole. Then that goes to staff does it go back to the commission as a whole to start putting pen to paper you know i think it's just important that we sort of have a sense of how the working group fits in with the overall sort of process 
Um, so I think that that's maybe a, a better way to, to mm -hmm. form it. How does this fit in with the overall process? Um, and if so it, I'm thinking I'm thinking they'll they'll report back to the entire planning commission during our meetings, and then if the planning commission accepts the ideas and wants to do something with it, then we might need staff to help, you know, in the implementation and whatever that looks like, yeah. such as modifying the chapters or something like that. Yeah. Does that make sense to everyone? Mike, do you have any thoughts about that? Yeah, I think depending on the nature of what the committee's looking at will depend on what my participation would be um, in that in that meeting. I think if we had a subcommittee working on the development of the land use chapter implementation strategy, in the same way that I've worked with the, the Parks Commission and the Transportation Commission and the Energy Commission, I think I would work with the subcommittee on the development of that that chapter. But if it's a deeper dive into housing or a deeper dive into energy, I don't know if I would necessarily need to be participating. But we can kind of take it on a case by case. Yep. Okay. So I think that that uh, sort of dovetails pretty well into the sort of second question that sort of came to my mind is, we've already looked at sort of preliminarily the outlines of other town committees uh, you know, housing and whatnot, um, and we've looked at their priorities and their goals and their implementation strategies and whatnot. And so, to the extent that we are sort of doing a deep dive into those issues, I guess the question is: is should the working groups sort of work within the boundaries that have been sort of set in those sort of preliminary outlines and sort of focus on sort of filling in the gaps? Or sort of, you know, just sort of refining and getting a little more detail with, with respect to specifics within the existing outlines. Or should do we want to give the working group sort of carte blanche to sort of go beyond what's already been presented? Um, and I don't. I'm curious to know what the group thinks about that. Um, I mean, I don't. I don't need to be the only one giving my my thoughts on things, but. Um... So anyone else can feel free to chime in. I'm not trying to dominate here, but uh, so my thoughts though about that are that uh, that part part of the idea for this came about when Barb wasn't comfortable because the economic development chapter was leaving out some areas that she, some some entire areas that she felt needed to be included. So to to make sure we're responsive to any concerns like that, I was thinking that the scope would be that if the working groups thought that there needed to be new subject matter areas included in the plan that are not there that that could definitely be within the scope of what they're looking at maybe it's not mandated that they find those things but they shouldn't feel um restricted i don't see any point for them to feel restricted and again if they want to if there's if there's you know interest in creating some new areas and then the ideas are brought back to the group that the, the entire planning commission could still reject the inclusion. I mean, one, one example from Barb's discussion was about COVID response and economic development. And so that's kind of an open question that we haven't discussed at all. Barb seemed to have strong feelings that there should be parts of the economic development chapter that are directly responsive to, to COVID-19. Uh, but do we all feel that way? So this that's probably that's going to be something that probably comes up. Um, does that make sense? Anybody else have any thoughts? I'm just so we're talking about specifically topic area working groups, right? Chapter by chapter. Okay, I just I think it might also be helpful to have if we do if we are working within the existing framework. It might be helpful to have one group, one small group of people that's thinking about how we take that framework and make it more accessible in the final version. I'm still struggling a bit with how we're going to take what we have into making it um, a, a more accessible document, figuring out how to connect the chapters, deleting the, the discrepancies and, and what that format looks like. So I think it might be helpful to have a group that's specifically looking at that piece of it which is separate from one specific topic. It's just the overall, how do we connect these things conversation. 
editing staff? <laughs> sure. <laughs> but like, and part of it is so part of it is doing the actual editing work, but part of it is just trying to figure out how we're gonna do that, which I think is worth having a deeper conversation on, and it's it might be helpful for that to start as a smaller group. Okay. Yeah. And we'll be we'll be talking about um, trying to figure out what exactly the different working groups will be later on in this. Yeah, I th I think it sounds good. I'm um, I agree with Stephanie, although maybe I'm thinking of it a little bit differently. In that, yeah, it's it's hard to I feel like it's hard to grasp the the plan without putting some of the chapters together. So yeah, I, I think that it is important to have a kind of a, a maybe a working group on just just kind of keeping track of timeline and goals and what are things that are um, conflicting in the city plan, which maybe is a little bit different than what Stephanie was saying. But um, yeah, I agree that a big picture group should <laughs> or something. I mean, maybe that's the wrong term. Continuity, maybe, is a good word. Yeah, yeah, maybe continuity. So I, I have the same sort of struggle, too. And that's, and I think that's why I, conceptually, I'm trying to, it's hard for me to articulate what I mean by scope with all this, but I think everybody's sort of circling around the same issue, which is what exactly is it that we want these chapter specific working groups to be focused on uh, and get a good sense of exactly what the task is at hand so that we are able to translate that work into the broader sort of document that I think we're all striving to create. And that's, and that, and the only thing that I'm sort of, I keep sort of getting stuck on is, is are we just taking the, are we taking the outlines that we have, taking a closer look at them to sort of evaluate, you know, sort of the feasibility of the goals and the implementation, implementation strategies, sort of reassessing what the priorities and the costs has they've been sort of, you know, laid out for us. If we want to make changes to that, I think John in the past has done a very good job of taking a look at some of their sort of priorities and cost assumptions and saying, I think that's probably going to be a, a you know a much bigger issue in terms of cost to do um, than what you know the other town committee might have thought. So, are we just sort of reassessing that sort of thing, or are we taking sort of a fresh look at what the chapter should be? Um, and I just don't know the answer to that. So. Um, yeah, maybe we can start developing some questions uh, that like a like a like a scope series of questions or something. I don't know um, if that would help people. Uh, for instance, it could start with uh, what you were just saying. Uh, does does the chapter capture all of the most relevant issues that the, you know that the city plan should address, or do you think there's something missing? And if so, what would that be? Uh, I don't know. Do we have an interest in, in having like in having some instructions like that? Um, or, I, you know, the alternative is to keep it more open ended. Um, what's everybody think? Well, I think it'd be good to have consistency across each of the working groups in terms of what their focus is. So, and I I get that there's going to be differences between each chapter, but okay. Well, what are some other what are some other questions we want to make sure that um, is included within the the scope? I can start taking some notes. I think some assessment of the feasibility is important.
Um, should we? And we've heard we've heard about um, inclusion and and you know social justice type things. Is that something that each working group should look at, and whether the chapters adequately address that? Yeah, I think so. That could also be something to consider in that whether it's a separate working group or whether it's sort of a review process, that that would be something to consider and the sort of as we're meshing it all together. If that makes sense. I think that makes sense. I mean, personally, I feel like, like, you know, building an inclusive community should be like our number one, number one goal. Like this should be an overarching theme of the, of the plan. Like building a walkable community that welcomes, um, you know, all people. Agreed. Yeah, agreed. And I think it's at the beginning of this, we talked a little bit about what sort of vision would make sense. And we got a little bit bogged down in the really long vision from the previous plan. But I think we're still with, I think at this point, we've looked at enough chapters that we have a good sense of what those most important things are. And I think it would be helpful to have that outlined. And it doesn't need to be something ridiculous, but the way that John just framed it was perfect. Something, something that's just, here's what this plan is definitely going to do in a sentence. So at the risk of opening Pandora's box here, do we want to have that discussion now and sort of nail down what those themes might be? Because I, I, think, I think you're right. I think once if we figure out what those themes are, and get it and distilled down to a couple of concepts. I think that'd be really helpful in terms of figuring out the scope for the work, but right. I don't know if it's worth having that conversation now or later. Well, what if it's just the topics now? We don't have to make it a nice sentence yet. <laughs> but what are the things that that nice sentence should include? Um, if, for a springing off point, I'm sorry, I, I'm not going to be as eloquent as John was, so I'm trying to keep notes. So. I just said, uh, I just wrote, does it adequately address making Montpelier as inclusive as, as inclusive as possible? So tell me how to modify that to make it better. Walkably inclusive. Well, the word walkable is not inclusive. <laughs> so, <laughs> 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 well, well said, good point. Uh, car free. Mobility. <laughs> inclusive, inclusive and accessible. There you go. With yeah. adequate housing. I think housing has come up in a lot of our chapters beyond the housing chapters. So I think that's definitely something that in some way needs to be within our main sentence. Affordability. Mentioned, you can just go with words too and we can build a sentence later. I mean, I think that's easier. <laughs> inclusive, accessible, sustainable. And I was thinking affordable in the sense of housing, not yeah, necessarily right. affordable. But yeah, I don't know how else. That's a good start. Yeah. I think that diverse, we can be inclusive, but I think it's important for us to recognize the need for diversity. Do we want to explicitly call for economic growth, business growth? Or vi viability, maybe? Um, OK, I'll probably put that as its own item here. Uh, I think hearkening back to um, our, one of our former chairs who disliked any word starting with B, so we'll, we'll get after Kim, or Kim will get after us at some point, but I mean, you've got the vibrant and um, those types of ones. When you talk about rather than economic development, what we really want is a vibrant downtown. 
I can agree to that. <laughs> and I think it's it's maybe like it's not sexy and it's not like maybe what you lead with your front foot, but, but like, you know, activities that have a high return on investment, like it's, it's more or less basic good governance, but I think focusing on, on, on good government and good governance is important. Um, maybe we're getting away from the, this idea that we were going to highlight like the three most important things. So. It's okay. It's a brainstorming session. It's yeah. big. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I, I don't think that, that we, that, that the working groups have to stick religiously to this too, but it is. So I think more might be fine if that makes sense. Um, Cause they're looking for inspiration about what the scope is. Well, what we, what we could do after, and, and we don't necessarily need to figure it out, but we just list out, identify those priorities, and then we just lay everything out and then understand how those, everything that's been proposed, how those things impact those priorities. I like that. Yeah. That also so made me think if we're talking about public input later, that if we if we do come up with a list of priorities, it might be good at this point to, to send that out and say, hey, Mom Pillier, is this right? Did we miss anything? Right. Now, here are your priorities. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> People don't like being told what their priorities are. All right, here's, here's what we're thinking should be the priorities for the town plan based on our previous plan and all the outreach we did there and taking the subject matter experts from our working groups and from our committees and really figuring out what it is that we should be doing as Mom Pillier. What do you think? Uh, okay, unless anybody, unless somebody wants to give me something new, I can, I can give you a summary of what we got so far here. Uh, number one, does the chapter capture all topics and issues that are relevant? Uh, and then a secondary question is, does it require additional sections? Uh, question two, uh, what is the feasibility of the items currently included in the chapter? Uh, three, does the chapter adequately address the social issues of the city values? Number four, does it adequately address making what pillar as inclusive, accessible, sustainable, diverse, and affordable as it can be? Number five, does the chapter support economic viability? Number six, does the chapter support a vibrant downtown? Number seven, do the suggested actions lead to a desired return on investment? That seems like a good starting point. Agreed. And then I think, uh, not to throw another, th item there, but one thing that I notice is missing almost universally in a lot of town plans is um, we do, people fail to consider what what would happen if there was no action. Like, what if we didn't do that? Sometimes not a whole lot would happen. Sometimes, like, it, it's critical. Like, we, like, some, there are some things that we are solely responsible for. There are other things that there are already two levels of government doing, and then if, if we decide to do that or not do that, it may or may not have an impact. So just recognizing like those things that we that we must do because no one else will do them, and then understanding what the, the implications are if there is no action. If that makes makes any sense. It, I think it does make sense. But uh, what do we want the working groups to do? Um, do you like should we have them go through and note for the chapters? what is essential and what isn't, or are you thinking something else? I guess maybe it's just like a, a, a box that says, does anybody else do this? I think it's not a bad idea because we had, we had asked or we had wanted previously the sections to give us the like ease of implementation kind of tags cost, ease of implementation sort of thing, and like who would do it. So it'd be just sort of like adding that, I think, same idea. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm having a problem coming with the, the word, but for the, um, for the actions that, that we want taken in the town plan, what is the key word for that? Decisive. 
No, I mean, like, what's the one we've been using? Like, what is the chap? The chapters are they say, they say goals, strategies. goals, strategies, strategies. Okay. Hello, everyone. Sorry, I'm so late. Was inadvertently detained. I hope you're all right after your inadvertent detention. Uh, yes. Yeah, I was inadvertently detained by a three-year-old, so I think well, I'm probably I okay. Yeah, there it goes. <laughs> this setup on Zoom is really strange. Is somebody sharing their screen? Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Now I understand. So, Barb, currently we're, we're going through the uh, the scope and what our expectations are for the working groups and the and the, the details about about. Oh, we're going to go forward with that? Yeah, good. Um, just briefly catch you up. Um, the, uh, the, general, the general scope is the working group is going to do its own research uh, and discussion on a topic. It's going to come up with its own ideas and proposals and bring those back to the planning commission. And the planning commission will decide whether it wants to act on that or not. Uh, In addition to what the committee comes up with for no. that chapter. The committee, the, well, the committee was, well, it's going to be a working group. It's going to be brainstorming. The committee won't do anything independent. It will just bring it back to the planning commission with what it came up with. Right. Sorry, I'm not being, I mean, the, the, the city committee, not in us. In to what we already have in the chapters, yes. Okay. All right. Great. Okay. Uh, and, you know, they may or may not add or remove stuff, you know, like that. So that's going to be within the scope. Um, what we're doing right now is we're kind of setting out a, the scope and priorities, like a kind of set of questions that the working groups will go through when assessing each chapter. Mm -hmm. so this is this is so that each working group will be at least somewhat consistent with the other groups in, in the types of subject matter that they come back with. Sure, yeah. Uh, so what do you have so far? Is this what I'm looking at on the screen? No, no. this is just the outline of our discussion right now. Um, I'm, I'm not able to share the screen I'm using. Um, I'll I'll email you what I got. Okay. So far, just so. Um. Know. So, but basically, you're saying that these the subcommittees that are part of the planning commission <clears throat> would be doing their own research. Is that what you said? Yeah, I mean, one way we've been talking about is, you know, they've been taking a deeper dive on the topic. Because exactly, yeah. The, yeah, widespread thought within the Planning Commission that when we look at some of these really big chapters like economic development or housing, that there's a desire that we wish we could, you know, digest it a lot more than just the little bit of time we have in our official meetings. Sure. Yeah, I agree. And the only thing that I might offer for consideration is that within all of these chapters that we eat, reconsider or somehow form a committee for is to consider what the effects of COVID ha have been on each of those chapters, have been or may be in the future. Of course, we can't exactly tell with our crystal ball, but um, at least uh, uh, helping them to sort of predict what might happen um, and doing doing some assessment of that. So that's our, our first question. This document I'm going to send you about that we're working on now. The first question is, uh, does the chapter capture all topics and issues that are relevant, uh, and does it require additional sections? So that would, I think, would be where you discuss whether this chapter needs to address COVID or, or anything else. Like right. That. I guess the only thing I would say is that in, in general, um, all of the sec all of the chapters need to address COVID to some extent or another. I mean, admittedly, maybe natural resources less than others, but but that's why it also another reason why it becomes so important to revisit some of the previous chapters that we have gone through. Uh yeah, I mean, I'm, t I'm tempted to have that discussion right now, whether to see if, if everyone agrees that we should try to like directly address COVID, or do we want to just get through this scope issue and talk about that kind of larger philosophical question separately? 
What does everybody think? Do you understand what I'm asking? Do we do we want to do we want to talk about whether we want every chapter to directly address COVID? Uh, here's what I would suggest. Let's let's continue. Let's not have that discussion now. And if we have time at the end of the discussion, we can talk about it. But, um, it seems like if there are ideas that are helpful to um, to reco recovery from COVID in any topic, we should in, they should just be included. Um, All right. But I'm not sure we need to start off with the you know assumption or put the lens of. Uh, I, I feel like we will have the, the COVID lens on regardless, or I can't speak for other people, but it just consumes my days, so. <laughs> I'm sure it does, John. That makes sense to me. Okay. okay. Could be, I don't know if it's helpful, but I created this document for the Planning Commission when we started the plan a while back, and I'm afraid to look at the date that I, this was created. But um, I can share my share my screen if it's easier. Uh, let's see here. I think Aaron has to unshare his first. I've got too many windows open here. So this one was done uh, just with the um, Energy Committee as an example um, where we broke things out into like a single vision sentence. And then you basically had your, your goals, which are measurable objectives, like something that you can say, yes, we did this or no, like you have to be able to determine whether or not something was done. And then the, the strategies. So within those, you know, the goals were basically, here's what we want to do, and then, you know, target date, data source, priority, and then the strategies. Um, and, you know, these are less important. They were just, this was just built to all feed into one system, which you never really materialized. But uh, the idea was you have like a policy or an action you have the effectiveness or, um, and then the effort. Um, and this box was just, you know, if a committee felt like they were ready with something, they could select it and then it would just go into like the, the master spreadsheet. So but we can ignore some of those. Well, I'm, not, I'm not seeing your screen on my screen. Is anyone uh, seeing anything? Nope. Ah, there it is. Thanks for, uh, thanks for letting me just talk there for a while while you find nothing, guys. It was a good primer. Yeah, so you have a good idea of what I'm about to show you. Um, you know, we, we broke it down into vision, goals, and measurable objectives. Um, we see uh, goals, you know, target date, data source, priority, um, and then the strategies. and. Um, this was just like a drop down of high, medium, or low. This was the checkbox I was referring to, um, which you know we can not, we don't necessarily need to make any use of. But um, and then these were the uh, other fields, which I think we thought maybe Mike would end up filling out whether there's an existing program or project timeline, responsible party, anticipated cost, and partners. Um, so I don't know if it's helpful or not. I mean, really, the only criteria that it's looking at, which is what a few of the committees used, was you know level of effectiveness and and uh, effort or resources required, and then a tab for supporting info. So I'll uh, stop sharing. I'll put the link in the chat box or send it. I'll follow up with email. I think you all. 
have it, it's in the folder um, with the city plan doc documents. But. Uh, yeah, do you specific, do you have a specific like way that you think that the working groups could use it? No. <laughs> uh, no, uh, if you were, if you were thinking like how, uh, how are the working groups going to, you know, what are we expecting? If this was useful, you can take it, add, remove anything, and then we could all fill out the same work from the same template or table. Okay. I think that's helpful. I think that format is a lot easier for me personally. John, could you send the link to that to everyone? Yes. Thanks. And I like the idea of having that separate group to look at the format and structure because I think that's an area that's going to become increasingly more important as we start to reach that next step of starting to actually build out, you know, we've got these implementation strategies, which are really more nuts and bolts, but we've got to get to start building our online presence of what this plan is going to look like. And, you know, that's not my strong suit. Um, so people who have a good eye for how to present materials, you know, we're going to have to put together a chapter and, put together what the implementation, we have the words of the implementation strategy, now we've got to decide how to present that in, a, in an understandable, logical way. And I think having a couple of eyes on that project would be helpful. Mike, was part of that, the idea of that too, was to be able to see if there were, uh, there was crossover in the various um, chapters. Was that supposed to help us see that? Um, by putting those implementation steps into this, into the web sheet, website. I'm just not clear. I'm trying to remember from seems several years ago. What Mike's talking about is uh, we, we were discussing before you came along that uh, we could have a working group that was basically dedicated to continuity and, and as Mike put it, structure of the entire city plan. So, so a few people looking at just that. Okay, so that wasn't necessarily about crossover, which was what John's part of what I think John's. Uh, no, I think, but I think what, the, what you're calling crossover is what I call continu continuity, which is just right. see how the chapters work together. Okay, right, so it's the figuring out how it fits together, what it looks, what it looks like is a big piece of that because that's how we figure out where there is that overlap and create that consistency. Right. So I think that's all part of it. And then, and then determine once we just identify those crossovers, then determine how to work them out. Um, so, Aaron, do you want to keep going uh, with the with the outline? I mean, there's there's still a number of things we have to work out. Sure. Okay. Um, so I just think on your scope, we just a couple of smaller issues, but I think the answers have already been fleshed out already. Uh, the first is, is, you know, is the, do we anticipate that any changes or edits or any of the work that the working groups do that would be brought to larger commit the commission to be voted on, approved, whatever? I think the answer has clearly been yes to that. Um, is there any disagreement with that? No. Okay. Um, and then the last point I put on there, I think it's kind of silly. I, I don't think it's really applicable that everyone I was thinking about it, but I had a question in my mind as to whether or not, you know, a, the work product from the working groups, whether it be advisory or, or you know, be advisory to whoever is ultimately going to kind of sew all this stuff together or is it a directive? I feel like once it goes to the planning commission and they vote on it, it kind of becomes we kind of put the imprimatur of the commission on the work product, so it becomes kind of a directive, but um, those are two small issues. Is there anything else with respect to scope that I'm missing? Please speak. I think uh, I feel pretty comfortable with the scope. 
Yeah. Could we also give this in consideration until the next meeting to sort of, I don't mean that, that we'd have to stop the process, but if there was anything else we felt compelled to add to the scope that we could add it in. Um, I think it would be later. it would be helpful if since Kirby took some notes on what that scope now includes, if you could send that out afterwards, and then we can all weigh in if we have additional thoughts. Yeah, I think that would be helpful. Yeah, it looks like we're done discussing that unless unless anyone wants to add more priorities. So, and if not, I'll I'll go ahead and send it now. Okay. Uh, so moving on, uh, next is kind of just a nuts and bolts issue is what the composition of the work groups are going to be, A, what the size of those groups are going to be, and, you know, how we're going to sort of assign members to the, to the work groups. And, um, Mike, I think the one thing that I, I, I always lose count of, how many chapters are we dealing with across the city plan? Roughly 12. 12, okay, that's what I thought. So, Maybe give or take one or two. Yeah, okay. So my thinking was was uh, probably maybe three people to a to a subcommittee or to a working group that would end up be about it'd be four chapters per person if you know everybody takes it on I, I think um, I guess the question is is, is that going to be enough or is that going to be too much work for people to go through four four sections possibly more if anybody works on the kind of the continuity commission <laughs> committee, I guess. Um, I think we're we're limited to keep it under four because a, a meeting of four would be a core uh, meeting commission is my understanding. Okay. So does three seem like a good number for everybody? Feels arbitrarily right to me. But. That sounds good. Aaron, were you also talking about having four different uh, reports to write, addressing four different chapters for each yeah. of us, right? I just think that given the number of given the number of chapters that are out there, if there's three people to a, to a chapter, it ends up being about four. Each person, each member of the of the commission, will end up handling reviewing four different chapters. And so I don't think I don't think we're going to end up having that many. You don't think it'll be that many? It's not what I'm anticipating. Right I'm now. not sure. I'm not very good with that. I, don't feel like it. I was I was thinking there'd be like four or five total, but but we'll have to when we get to that point of discussion. Oh, you mean four? You mean yeah, Mike, four, four or five chapters that we review? Yeah, but I mean, I might not like review all, all of them. Yeah. We don't have to review all of them, is what you're saying, Kirby? Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I don't think, I mean, I anticipate we're not going to have interest in uh, some of the some of these chapters. I mean, for instance, I think energy is one that I think we're all quite comfortable with. We know a lot of great work was done. I don't think there's a lot of feeling that we need to go in and, and do more on that. Uh, yeah, so I don't know, but we'll, we'll see, I guess, when we get further down in this discussion. Yeah. And so... The other question I had about this is how how are members going to be assigned to various chapters? I don't have a clue. I'm not a manager, so I don't know how people are going to. How about assist. how about how about I, I'll propose something? I, I was thinking about it earlier today. Uh, after this meeting tonight, um, I don't think there's a problem if we do an everybody email with this and just telling what interest you have on it. As long as there's no talking back and forth. Just, just send like after, at the end of, by the end of this discussion, we'll know what chapters we want to do as a group, and everyone just express their interest on uh, through an everybody email. I could start it off. Um, do it in ranked order, and we'll hope that the chips fall in a really great way with a ranked order, and that we can just assign them that way. And if not, I guess I could be like a dictator and from there. Does that, does that sound okay? Kirby and his iron fist. Yeah. It's like, you're working on sewage, Aaron. Sorry. I'll take it. <laughs> you hear no complaint from me? Um, okay. 
So Kirby, once we know how many we're going to do, you'll know how much many each of us should volunteer for. Yeah. And if you want to do a, an, an above average amount of working groups, you can note that in your email. Because some of us are retired and we have more time. That's what I was, that was, right. I was anticipating with that statement. Okay. I sort of thought so. Yeah, <laughs> that's great. Okay, fine. <laughs> I, mean, I think at this point we only have five implementation strategies that are done. We have two more that are close to being done. So and, and that's, we may have 12 chapters, but we don't have 12 to review right now. Right. And, and Aaron was going to talk about that later about, about the review. So we can, I guess, segue into that a little bit. I'll just say that my, my thought is that for the chapters that aren't done yet, we could still talk about assigning them and whatnot, but, uh, obviously the work on that's going to be put off, which would mean that the expectation for that work to be done will also be put off. Like for instance, if we expect the work to be done in two months, for the ones we haven't done yet, it would be two months from, af from after the planning commission gets its first look at it. Make sense? Okay, so back, back to you, Aaron, sorry. Yeah, no, that's good. I mean, I think uh, unless unless we want to have a discussion about what uh, chapters we know we want to have committee members assigned to for a working group, and those we don't want, we can move on. But if we want to sort of start to narrow down the universe that we're dealing with here, we can do that now or not. We're going to need to do it at some point. Did you have an idea that you wanted to do it later, Kirby? No, I, I thought that later on in, in Aaron's outline we were going to do it. But if it's not later on, then sure, we can go ahead and do that. Yeah, this, this, is, probably, this is probably the appropriate time to do that, I guess. Okay. Uh, what, what do we, we, got, we got housing and economic development, right? And we've got, yes. And we've got continuity. We'll call it continuity and structure. I would say natural resources. You mentioned that as a potential. I think that's should definitely have some group looking at it, in part because um, it's it covers multiple different committees. So I think it's going to be a little more complicated. So it covers parks. It covers mm -hmm. conservation commission. Covers and also, I, and also, I want to be on that one. <laughs> covers the river and flood issues and things like that too, right? Yes. And that's that's my expertise. I thought it's what I thought. So yeah. <laughs> I'm heading right for you, Stephanie. Um, I think we should also do transportation, especially because I think they're pretty close, right, Mike? Natural resources and transportation both were almost done before COVID hit. So transportation just emailed me la um, last week and we were emailing back and forth about setting the final goals. Now they were just working on strategies for the for the goals that they've adopted. So I'm hoping August they'll have a meeting and we can work through. Maybe maybe be done in August. The way this usually goes, it'll take one one more meeting, and I think it will, and it'll be September. Um, Natural resources was also getting um, getting close with with theirs. I bet they won't be done until September though. They probably have one meeting in August and one meeting in September to go. Um, Mike, do you have readily available all of the, all of the chapters just to, just to kind of throw those out there so that they're on top of everyone's mind? Yeah, I've got a, I've got a table which has a bunch of the timelines and stuff and where they're at. So can, can you, I can send that out. Can you share it? Can you share your screen? Uh, I could if, Aaron unshares. All right. Let me see if I can find it real quick. <clears throat> All right. Let me see. Now go back. All right, can you see that? No. 
Nope, nothing there. Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, see Sorry, it. I was just had to expand it to see it. All right. So we have um, the the chapters are on the left side here. Some chapters we've talked about arts and culture. Um, Kevin had started something, but I don't have anything from him when he left to go um, on furlough and he's still on furlough. Community services, um, I've been working on parks and I'm starting to draft some of the other pieces which are uh, senior center, cemetery, and recreation are all under community services. Economic development we have done, that's why it's in red. Energy we have done, that's here. Governance, I haven't started it. It's not a required chapter, but we'll see where that one goes. Um, historic resources we have done, housing we have done, implementation was just that um, discussion of butterflies, rainbows, and unicorns, and so that, that piece is done. Um, the ones that are left that are really required, uh, land use, which you guys are responsible for writing, natural resources, which has been started, public safety actually isn't technically a required chapter, but I think that's going to be one we'll probably want to put together, including community justice, however, however we want to call it. It could be emergency management. Um, there are a number of ways we could frame that, but I think the fire department, police department, and community justice would all be in a single um, discussion chapter. Transportation, as I said, is actually fairly close to being done, and utilities and facilities doesn't have a committee. Um, I've got a lot of that done already. I just have to meet with the folks in DPW. The DPW is our facilities and utilities folks. And, um, and I've got to contact the schools because education, um, the only requirement in education is really to talk about facilities. Uh, we don't really plan for the education of people. We just make sure we've got the, um, the facilities uh, sufficient and how those facilities overlap with, um, say, land use and housing. Um, it was a bigger topic in the 90s and early 2000s when our communities were growing faster than our schools could accommodate them. So we, it was a really a, a flashpoint to make sure that as we're talking about land use and as we're talking about housing that we recognize its impact on education. Nowadays, we want to build as much as we can to keep our schools operating so but anyways uh educational facilities would also be in utilities and facilities so okay so i think we there's one threshold question here and that is do we want to have the, a working group tackle land use first because remember land use has to be drafted by us and it will and it will be staffed by mike or presumably by mike by someone yeah uh, do we want to do that with the working group starting the work, or do we want to just do that as the entire group? Well, it seems like that one has to come at the end after all of the other reports. But that wasn't, it wasn't that you were suggesting that we should start it immediately, right? No, it's just, I mean, do, you know, should, should we expect that we're going to have a working group start that work, or should we expect that you know, maybe that won't be a worthwhile because we're all going to want to dig into it, maybe. Or maybe we will actually be concerned about time and the working group could be a way to save the larger group some time. So I think it makes, um, I was just going to say, I think it makes sense to have a working group start it. Uh, I think a big part of that is essentially laying out existing conditions and I think they might be helpful in, in framing things in a way uh, and, and zeroing in on the decisions that the, the planning commission needs to make and, and using their time as efficiently as possible. Okay. Anybody else on that? Agreed. Yeah, yeah that's fine. Agreed. Okay. I think if it's, if there's a start on the land use chapter, the, the other pieces, once we've got natural resources and transportation, I think that subcommittee would have all the pieces that they would need to start to develop the land use um, chapter because the chapters that would be missing, you know, arts and culture, community services, public safety, are probably going to have a less of an impact 
on the land use plan. The land use plan is really gen generally looking at our built environment, transportation, natural resources, um, the, the historic, the housing, uh, economic development. Those are really your key drivers for your land use. So yeah, I think I think that's that makes sense. I would hesitate to start it though until we're all comfortable with those chapters. Yeah. So once we've had, a, if we have a committee looking at natural resources, I want to be able to have that committee look at it, have the full group look at it before we're moving think, on to land use. I think for, for now, the only working groups that would start work right away are those that are, are tackling chapters we've already gone over. And, and so land use, I don't think would be that. Yeah. Um, we would have to decide later on when we want that working group to start its work preferably about two months before we take it on as, as the larger group. Uh, so, okay, I heard transportation mentioned earlier. That's not one that leaps out to me as necessarily needing a huge dive that uh, outside of the Planning Commission's own view itself, but uh, if any, I mean, I don't know, is anyone want to advocate for that? And keep in mind that we are trying to keep this to a smaller number so that we don't have so many. Right. I would advocate for that because I have a pretty good sense of what's going to be coming out of the transportation chapter. And also, um, as we've looked at this comprehensively in the city, transportation becomes a critical element and it certainly impacts land use. So as we go along, I think at least we're going to want to take a little bit deeper dive on transportation and maybe we'll decide that what the you know what the chapter says is just fine but I'd rather have a deeper dive on that one anybody else advocate one way or the other okay um, it puts us at one two three four five six uh which means that some people will be on three working groups can you repeat the list that you have now kirby yeah housing economic development continuity and structure natural resources transportation and land use if we have if we have just five it puts everyone at I think but that's land fine. It, they're not all starting right now, so it's not like we okay. it's not like we all need to dive in heavily right now on all of them. And even if we don't like for land use, we don't necessarily have to decide right now who wants to be on that group. We can punt that until we're actually ready to be doing it, uh, which might be helpful so we don't get tangled up in things that aren't coming for a while. Okay. Sounds good. Do we want to do we want, okay so you so does that sound good? Everyone I'll I'll leave land use off for now. But our, our tentative understanding is that there will be a working group on it later. Okay. Okay. What's what's next, uh, Aaron? It looks like we have that sorted out. Unless unless someone wants to advocate for utilities and facilities deep dive or something. I also yeah. think we should leave space for once we see some of these chapters, maybe deciding we should have a working group dive in. I think, I don't think we're limiting ourselves now to just these groups. There might be other things that come up. Good point. Okay, what else do we need to work out, Aaron? Uh, timeline deliverables. I think we just chatted about that a little bit. Uh, when I was speaking with Kirby earlier about this, he had sort of put out a two month timeline for review by the working group, which I thought seemed like a, like a nice sweet spot. So that's just a thought is just, you know, is two months sort of a good amount of time for folks to get the working group together, take a look at whatever they need to do, figure out what they need to do. Um, it's kind of just a guideline, but I think it'd be good to sort of have a, an understanding of what the expectation is up front so you know people can kind of manage their workload appropriately so just a question for the ones we haven't reviewed yet is the idea that the committee will still look at them as a whole so when we get natural resources we'll look at it as a full group before the deep dive 
or will we get it and then do the deep dive and then bring it to the full group? I mean, my thought is, and this is just me talking, but I thought, I think that the approach that we've been using where the whole commission takes sort of a preliminary look at the, at the outline, like fills us in on details. We ask some questions so we can just kind of get a better sense of what's going on. I think it's a good way to kick it off and then we can funnel it to a working group if we need to. But, I think okay. that makes Agreed. sense because help, it would help target what the working group looks at too. Yep. I think it helps us all have at least some, you know, some familiarity in the first place too. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so with that, I mean, is, is it, does anybody have any objection to a sort of a, a loose two month time frame for review with each of these working groups? Okay. Um, next issue, I the question that came to mind is, is this is more to Mike than anybody else is, you know, what's helpful to you in in your staff as we're doing this like what what's going to be helpful to you is when we sort of do a review what would you like from us in terms of work product that you can think of and if, if there's nothing that jumps out at you that's fine but i figured i would ask the question um i guess the as, as you know just what i had mentioned earlier of you know i think I would benefit a lot from having the, the continuity and structure and having folks taking a look at that and helping to pull the start to show how these pieces are going to fit together and get presented. Um, I can do that, but I tend to have a little bit more clunky work style. Um, so usually people are a little bit more right brained than I am can usually come in and, and take take my ideas or take our ideas and start to put them together into a really good presentation. Um, so I think if I, if there's somebody who's got the time to, to work on how we're going to roll this out, make it look good um, and make it accessible to the public so they can get an opportunity to make comments on it. And you know, eventually our product, we hope to be online um, and starting to get public feedback. So, you know, we're going to have to start putting this together in a format that's actually readable and understandable to the public. And that, that would be the, the need that I would be looking for over the next couple of months before we, you know, as I said, keep in mind that we're going to put together the, the municipal planning grant application. Um, and if we understand how this product here that we're putting together with the subcommittees um, you know, what are we going to then hand off to our consultant? What do we want our consultant to do for us um, when January comes around? <sighs> maybe that's what they do. Maybe our job is just to keep pulling these things together and worry a little bit less about how it's going to be presented. And we hire somebody who specializes in um, kind of these web rollout presentation, kind of get somebody with those um, those skills. I had totally forgotten about the consultant. So that's a good reminder. Mm. Yeah. And it might help to have somebody who, you know, is very familiar with that actually guiding us through this. It doesn't mean that we might not have our own concept, but we certainly got a lot of guidance from um, our consultant for the zoning. So um, that we might not otherwise have touched on. So it seems to make sense. Okay, so the last thing I wanted to um, sort of put in front of the group is just the actual sort of deliverable with all of this is, and I think this will probably vary from working group to working group, but it just seems to me, you know, it's sort of a, almost a silly thing to dwell on, but it's, you know, red line, change it to the outline, short report, something that's just digestible to the larger commission so that we understand what the working group dug into and what changes they're looking to make relative to the, uh, the initial outline that they were looking at. So does any other sort of specific thing that 
this group thinks should be included in the final work product that, we, that the working group present to the commission. Now's the time to throw that out. If we can get it in a table, I mean, I, I know it makes Stephanie and myself happy, but um, otherwise it's not a big deal. We can just take it and put it into a table, so. Right, I was almost thinking that the it might make sense for the continuity group to meet first and give them a month or two to put something together before the other working groups start. I don't want to slow us down, but I think that might make it easier going forward. Or that group can work on just taking, as some of those other groups are working, they could be fed some info, like there could be some back and forth maybe. Yeah, that's fair. It might help for that group to have a specific topic to look at if they're looking at one of the groups to start. That works for me. I was thinking the continuity group would start later because they're not going to have all the chapters to compare at first. Well, I think the first part of it might maybe it's a two phased continuity approach, but I think that's that's a that's part of it is the at the end making sure it all works. But I think setting it up, setting up the chapters in a way that we can do that is the first piece. And that that I think needs to happen sooner. Yep. I, I, like, I think that's, that's right. <laughs> We do set, have some chapters to work with to in terms of setting up a, um, a template or whatever we're going to use. So do you think it would be helpful, Stephanie, if, if the continuity group sort of met first and sort of had a better sense and some guidance for the rest of the working groups in terms of what would be helpful in a, in a final product? Yeah, I think I think that would be helpful, and then that sort of sets up a format for a, a better format for the working groups. Okay. Okay. So, so my understanding is, so we should expect to hear from the continuity group suggestions for like specifically what feedback coming from the other working groups should look like. Like when Aaron uses deliverable, I mean, like yeah, like the the form that this feedback will take. It's yeah, the the format. How do we how are we organizing this? And it gets to what Mike was talking about too, um, yeah. what it looks like at the end, which I know John and I are both really excited about making it clearer. <laughs> so I think that would be helpful to start. Okay. Okay, so unless there's anything else you want to chat about that, I figured we moved to the public input piece. We don't have a lot of time, so I'm just trying to move this along as I can. Um, yeah, I, I don't I don't think we're going to be able to um, to to really get into the uh, outreach stuff. So we're going to probably have to put that off. So we can plan on next time, hopefully, talking about how we would like some of our outreach efforts, public input, however you want to put it, uh, uh, call it, uh, how that's going to look in the short term and the long term. So. Yeah, you know, should be a discussion we have. Uh, you know, it's it's tough because we want feedback now, but then COVID. So, uh, yeah, we'll we'll talk about that next time. What's up, Barb? I'm just a little unclear in terms of the um, the continuity and structure um, work group, and will they be also identifying ways that we can get public feedback? What's the interface between um, public feedback and that group? That's a really good question. I, I don't know about, I don't know if that group, I don't think, I don't, I don't, for based on our discussion tonight, I don't feel like out, outreach falls under what we were talking about with that. We were talking okay. about is the, basically is the city plan internally consistent? It's kind of the gist of what we were talking about, not about uh, outreach. Um, so we'll talk about outreach separately, but then there's another open kind of question and is do the other working groups, should the other working groups pursue outreach? Uh, based on the way we've been talking about it, it seems like that might be a little too much. It seems like we're already asking well, quite a bit of the working groups so maybe don't, unless, unless they feel like they really need to go out and talk to an expert, maybe we don't expect any kind of outreach to be part of the scope. Well, yeah, speaking to an expert would be different than getting public input necessarily. But if for those working groups, if you're going to define a two-month time frame, it really 
wouldn't work for public outreach. Yeah. So I think, yeah, I think we'll just need to figure that out next time separately, um, how we want our outreach plan to look like. And then it might be a, here's a, when we come back after, after two months from whatever group is meeting, it might be a, here's something that we really think we're going to need public input on and we want to make sure they see that sooner rather than later. So it might be, that might be part of what comes out of the groups. I also, to Barb's question on the continuity group, I don't, I agree, Kirby, I don't think they should be specifically tasked with also figuring out the outreach plan, but I think creating the, the document and updating the information in a way that makes it more accessible is what will help us do that outreach. Yeah, that's a good point. Okay, so uh, I think with that, we'll, uh, uh, yeah, with that, with that, uh, um, we'll look to adjourn. Just as one final note, just to cap things off, we talked about having a continuity group about how we, uh, how it could get to work first. So one thing that um, we'll probably do next time, next time we meet, is talk about uh, like setting a date at which we expect that group to report back the first part of what we we're talking about. So we'll 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 plan to handle that next time. Sound good? Okay. All right. Do we have a motion to adjourn? Ruby, real quick, just in the short term, are you going to send out a list of uh, working groups for people to? I, I already sent out an email to sign up for everyone to sign up. And uh, yeah, as we were talking, and I, and I sent out another email that was this kind of scope and priorities for the working groups for everyone to look at that kind of. And, and I called that a draft because, you know, that's going to evolve. You know, I think we've already talked about how we expect that to evolve. So those two things I've sent out. Um, and then on the agenda next time, we'll have a discussion of outreach plan. And uh, and we'll also set a deadline for the continuity, continuity group to get back to us. We'll also, I mean, I guess announce the next meeting what people's assignments are for the working groups. And I'll take any non-responses to the sign up as someone volunteering for it anything we need and and and, and I'll, I'll i'm also going to fill in i'm not going to actually sign up but i'm not going to do a ranked preference for myself i'll just i'll fill in sound good okay do we have a motion to adjourn so moved okay moved by stephanie second by barb all in favor of adjourning say aye Bye. Bye. Okay. See you guys in two weeks. Thanks. Thanks. Bye, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Yeah, thanks, everyone. Thanks, Aaron.